can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Valentin. I am a lead.NET engineer at SoftServe. And today, actually, I would like to tell you about the null handling uh, techniques in .NET, in C Sharp, particularly. And uh, this topic was chosen by me because actually handling null values in C Sharp is important aspect of writing robust and reliable code. And however, one of the frequently recurrent problems is the poor way the developers implicitly or explicitly work with null values. And it can result in several potential issues and performance impact. So in this presentation, I would like to go over the mishandling of null potential issues to describe a little bit the nullable types as well as null handling techniques, null handling patterns, some kind of best practices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And actually, the main aim of this my presentation is like not to teach you how to work with nullable types in C sharp because uh, I assume that all of us actually know how to do it. Uh, in your own projects and your own tasks, but its presentation will be mostly aimed to recap your knowledge. And maybe you will see some interesting thing related to performance of each of uh, null handling cooperation in C Sharp. And uh, hopefully you will have fun with this presentation and this information that I am going to share with you. Uh, I assume that my presentation will take about 40 minutes. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate to interrupt me and ask your questions. Or anyway, in the end of uh, each technique describing, we will have a time for your questions. And then we will go over the next uh, techniques and patterns as well. So maybe someone have some questions now. No, OK. So let's start with the uh, mishandling of uh, nulls potential issues. And actually, in C sharp, a null value represents an absence of a value. It is used to indicate that a variable property or field uh, does not refer to any object instance. But uh, nulls actually can be problematic in code because of not handling properly. And uh, it actually can lead to runtime errors, and uh, some of them are the following. The first of all is all well known null reference exception, and it actually can create the program or cause incorrect behavior. The second one can lead to the security vulnerabilities. So, for example, uh, as a potential issue of uh, forgetting some null checks or some null checks might be missing and it can lead, for example, to a buffer overflow attack and some kind of uh, several other attacks that can lead actually to a big potential issue. The next one is debugging difficulties because actually unexpected situation can occur in some unexpected places. And actually these issues can be difficult to reproduce. So we should be pay attention when debugging our code uh, in case of the potential null handling issues. Uh, the next potential issue is actually maintenance costs. And uh, the main idea here that X required additional testing and debugging to ensure that actually all the potential null handling techniques are used and null potential issues are resolved correctly in our source code. Also, uh, it influences the code readability because actually, all of us know the uh, good self-documented code when it's easy to read and easy to understand what's going on in this code. But uh, actually, potential null mishandling issues can lead to its own readability. And it could be difficult to developers to understand actually and modify that code in the right way. 
But uh, anyway, when it comes to thinking about the checking for null, the first step is considered to actually what we are checking null against. And actually in the higher level, we are checking the data. And within the C sharp, we must deal with two categories of data. And uh, one of the categories is all of you well-known value types. So actually, when you are dealing with data that is stored as a value type, uh, here the data will be directly assigned to this type. And the value type will have its own memory allocated that contains a copy of the data. And the value types are integer, boolean, char, and date type. And uh, the second category of data that you can work with referenced to a reference type. So the main idea here that actually we are not storing the value itself, we are storing the reference to its value, it's allocate its own memory. And actually in reference type, we can uh, handle an objects or classes, arrays, strings, and delegates. So all of these types potentially could be the root cause of the uh, nulls issues in our source code. And now let's maybe go to the most common null handling techniques in C-sharp and especially to their performance. But first of all, I wanted to mention that uh, in this presentation, I used the uh, benchmarking test. And uh, for this purpose, I used the benchmark.net library. I assume it's well known. And I had the following preconditions that you can see on slide. The main are that actually we are using the latest update of the Windows 11 and the latest Net SDK 7. And uh, what about the results? Uh, the results format is the following. The uh, mean property would be the main property that we are going to see in the benchmark test results. And it's actually arithmetic mean of all the measurements. Also, I wanted to note that um, all the measurements are in nanoseconds. So actually, when we are talking about performance of null handling, it actually, spoiler, spoiler, uh, don't have a very huge impact on performance. But actually, this is performance. So anyway, we will need to measure it and consider it uh, while we are using uh, some of null handling techniques or patterns or using just null handling in our source code. And so let's maybe dig into the null handling techniques a bit. And the first technique is actually using the null collision operator. The null collision operator is used to provide a default value when an expression evaluates to null. It returns the left-hand operator if it's not null, otherwise it returns the right-hand operator. This operator is actually very useful when you want to assign a default value to a variable if it is actually null. So as you can see in this example, the uh, variable name is set to null. If name is null, then assign the value unknown to, dis to display name instead. If name is not null, its value will be assigned to display name instead. Uh, talking about pros and cons of uh, coalition operator, we can uh, see the following. So it's concise and easy to read code, reduce the amount of boilerplate code required to check for null, but in cons actually may lead to unreadable code if nested too deeply and can hide potential issues when a null value actually is not expected. So now let's go to performance test, a review a bit of uh, C-sharp source code. So here we can see a class for a benchmark. And here we have eight methods. So, uh, and we have null string, not null string, and uh, length properties to use in our benchmark. So. First of all, we are working with the uh, 
uh, just single operation using the collision operation with null string. Uh, also, we are doing the test uh, using this operation in for loop for 1000 operations. And we are going to measure the if else statement uh, across using the null collision operator for one operation for 1000 uh, operation. And also here we are using the same uh, tests, but here we already using non-null string. So just to see the difference of how the null collision operator works against the simple if else statement in uh, several uh, scenarios for null and not null operations. So as we can see uh, here on the slide, actually in assembly code, uh, the null collision operator is actually implemented using the single null check and conditional jump, which has actually a very low overhead. But uh, anyway, let's see the benchmarking results. And actually, yeah, as we can see here for null collision operator and if else statement, null collision operator is just a bit slower against the if else statement for null string for single operation uh, and uh, a bit faster for the operation with not null string. But anyway, if we are talking about uh, 1000 operations, the results actually all not the same. So here we can make a conclusion that actually null collision operator don't affect the performance because all the results actually in nanoseconds and we can securely use it as well as if else statement and actually don't worry about the performance, but uh, in some cases it would be hurting the performance. For example, um, in case if we will have uh, a long uh, string for uh, checking for null, like it could be database query or some complex calculation. So uh, in this situation, we just need to think about using maybe not collision operator, maybe just use if, if else statement or maybe some other techniques. But all of this is depending on your own uh, tasks uh, during the implementation of the code. But uh, overall, as you can see, using the null collision operator can simplify the code and make it more coincide. It have uh, simple syntax, easy to read, and actually easy to understand it. Do you have any questions related to collision operator? No questions. Okay. So let's move on and let's talk about null collision assignment operator. So this is the second technique and uh, it's combines the null collision operator and the assignment operator. It assigns a value to a variable only if the variable is currently null. So as you can see here in this example, we are declaring a string uh, variable calling name and initializing it to null. Then we use the null collision assignment operator to assign the default value of unknown to the variable. Um, and since the name already uh, initialized by null, then uh, unknown will be assigned to this variable. So overall, the null collision assignment operator can be very useful shorthand for assignment default values to variables that may be null. Uh, if you are talking about pros and cons here, so the pros uh, almost the same as for the null collision operator is uh, actually consists and easy to read code and reduce the amount of boilerplate code required to check for null and assign a default value. 
but uh, actually as a cons, it may not be suitable for complex cases where the value of the variable depends on multiple conditions. And here actually uh, you should keep in mind that all of that depends on your tasks during the implementation. And now let's talk a bit about the performance. So currently, as we can see in and assembly, uh, and uh, it's actually the same as for the coalition, uh, coalition operator. It's uh, implementing using a single null check and can only one conditional jump. And let's see the benchmark test for this operator. So uh, actually almost the same test for the null collision operator that we had previously. We have uh, eight methods with just single operation uh, with assignment to not null string, the uh, 1000 operations. Also, we have if else statement for single operation and for the 1000 operations as well. And here we have the same methods for the non null string values to see the difference in performance when we are dealing with null string and not null string. And let's move on to the benchmarking results. So results are interesting because in this case for null string, uh, if else statement almost did not hurt the performance in any way. Instead of null collision ascending, uh, assignment operator has some, a very, very small impact. But when it's for single operations, but when we are talking about a lot of operations, so here we can see that actually if else statement is almost twice faster. So here you should consider your own tasks, your own data and amount of data you're dealing with when you're using the null collision assignment operator and be aware of if you actually use a lot of data for uh, checking an assignment and it actually could hurt the performance. So please be careful here. But actually, in most cases, uh, this operator did not hurt the performance. And it has simple syntax, easy to read and understand. So yeah, definite, definitely you can use this technique to deal with nulls in your source code. Any questions here? No questions. Okay, let's move on. And the next technique is actually using the null conditional operator. So the null conditional operator is used to invoke a method or property on an object if the object is not null. If the object is null, the method or property is not invoked and null is returned. So in this example, uh, as we can see, the numbers variable is set to null. The null conditional operator is used to check if numbers is null. And if so, return null. Instead, they're attempting to call the first or default method, which would result in a, a null reference exception. Since the number is null, the first number variable will be set to null. If you are talking about pros and cons, uh, actually, the pros uh, makes code more coincide and readable and reduce the number of null checks required. So definitely we can use conditional operator, operator to null checks in more efficient way. But it may not be suitable for complex cases where the value of the variables depend on multiple conditions. So let's go to actually performances. As we can see in the assembly code, it's actually implemented using a single null check a conditional branch. So here the uh, performance actually almost the same that we had for the previous operators, but let's make sure. And let's see other benchmark. So almost the same benchmark that we have for the previous 
uh, operators. Here we have the single operation with null string, uh, 1,000 operations for the null string, and we are comparing with if else statement here for single operation and for 1,000 operations with null string and the same tests we have for the non-null value. And let's move on to the results. So here we can see the new conditional operator for single operations with null string is actually faster that than if else statement with null string for single operations. For uh, non-nulls for single operation, the results are not significantly different. And when we are talking the, about the 1,000 uh, operations uh, for null strings, the results actually almost the same here. Uh, for null string and non-null string. So here, as you can see, using the null conditional operator can simplify the code and make it more concise while also preventing, preventing the null reference exceptions. So definitely we can use it, but anyway, keep in mind that you are working with a lot amount of data, maybe in some, uh, cases, you actually can use conditional operator or if else statement, if it's easier for you, and the results actually would be almost the same. While when we are using uh, this operator not for the big amount of data, the null collision operator can be faster than the simple if else statement. Any questions here? No questions. Okay, let's move on. And the next operator, and as well as next technique, is using the conditional uh, operator. And the conditional operator is actually a shorthand way of writing an if else statement in C sharp. And uh, it also can be used for handling null values by providing a default value in case uh, a variable is null. So as we can see here in this example, the name variable is null, but we want to display a default value of anonymous instead. We can use the conditional operator to check if name is null, and actually if it is, assign the default value to display name. If you're talking about the pros and cons, so actually the pros almost the same as for the previous operators, and the cons actually the same as well, all of this depends on your own tasks and some multiple conditions depending on your uh, own source code uh, and the null handling technique in your source code. So what about performance? The performance actually, um, as we can see in assembly code is almost the same. We have the same single null check in the conditional branch and um, Actually, let's see the benchmark test for this. So here we can see the same eight methods uh, working with a single operation for the conditional operator, the same method for 1,000 operations. And uh, also we can see the uh, same methods for null string and not non null string and uh, the comparison with elf, elf else statement for the single operation for null string and non null string and for 1000 operations for null string and non null string. So let's go back to our results. And here we can see that for single operation, for null string, actually conditional operator is faster, a bit faster than if else statement with null string. 
on non null string, as you can see, we are not dealing actually with null. So if else statement is a bit faster. But when we are talking about the lot of operations, in my case, it's one um, thousand operations, the results actually almost the same. So this operator is uh, a good equivalent of if else statement and actually it's not hurting the performance so you can definitely use it in your source code instead of if else statement and don't worry about the performance any questions here no questions okay let's move on and the next operator is actually is operator and is operator is actually is a keyword that serves the purpose of checking whether a variable is compatible with particular type. And we can use it for null checking as well, because actually it's using for uh, comparing the values to a constant such a null, or just to determine if the some value or variable are is there uh, specific type, let's say. So in this example, we are just using the if a statement when we are checking if the string name variable is null and if it's null, we are uh, writing to the console the appropriate string with name is null or just, just a name. Um, if we are talking about pros and cons, so we can see that the pros are useful for type checking and type casting and can be used to check for null values. And uh, actually for cons, uh, we just need to keep in mind that it depends on your own tasks, uh, on your implementations of the source code. So uh, maybe is operator is not a good idea to use with just nulls and use instead of them some of coalition operators. But let's see um, on is operator from the perspective of the performance. So here we can see that actually it's used in single type check. It has like a very low overhead. But anyway, in the assembly code that we can see that it may take a bit longer than the uh, one of the collision operators. And also keep in mind that is operator we are using not just only to handle null values. It uh, has a functionality of uh, checking the uh, types. So let's move to our benchmark and try to see what we are measuring here. So we have only four methods here. We are using is uh, operator for single operation. We are using is operator for 1000 operations. And we are comparing with um, equality operators here for single operator and for the uh, 1000 operations. And let's move to results. So here we can see that using is operator for uh, against the equality operator is takes a bit longer time when we are talking about single operations. But when we are talking about uh, not single operations, the time amount is almost the same. So here the conclusion is actually you can use is variable as a technique, but anyway, it's more preferable to use some coalition operators in case of just checking for nulls because is operator uh, using actually by default, not only for nulls, but just for checking the variable types. Any questions here? I no. think there's one thing to note about yeah. this is operator. And it's when you don't have operator overridden for equality, 
it's the same behavior by the Roslyn compiler. It should be um, ex actually using the, the operators under the hood. But I think when there is overridden operator for equality, the is operator is not using them. So it's doing reference, comparison, reference check. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So anyway, here, uh, as I mentioned before, so uh, I assume it's better to use some of collision operators actually instead of is operator for dealing with nulls. But anyway, it's a technique itself, but it can be used. Any other questions or notes? No, thank you. Thank you, Marcin. And we are going to the next technique. And actually, the next technique is using the null for given operator. It's a bit different thing. The null for given operator is used to tell the compiler that uh, a value is not null, even if the compiler is unable to determine that the value is null. So here in this example, we are uh, talking to our compiler that non nailable string is uh, actually nullable string and we definitely know that is nullable. In case uh, if it's not nullable, we will uh, deal with uh, mm, some uh, null reference exception here. So uh, what about pros and cons? So it can make code more concise and readable, but it can lead to runtime errors if used incorrectly. So in this case, we need to be sure on 100% that if we are using the null for given operator, the uh, value with which we are using this operator is actually uh, not null. And actually using all this operator can hide potential issues when a null value is not actually expected. So if we are talking about the performance, actually from the assembly code perspective, it almost like the same like for the other operators. But um, anyway, actually in terms of performance, uh, like checking null for given operator does not introduce any additional overhead because it does not generate any additional code. But anyway, we can check it. We have a benchmark test for it as well. So we have four methods here when we are using the null for given operator for single operation for 1000 operations. And we are uh, using the null collision operator as opposite just uh, to see the difference. And let's move on to the results. And so actually, as you can see for single operation, null for given operator, uh, actually don't spend any time for this. But if we are talking about uh, uh, lots of operations, so it almost twice faster than null collision operator, but anyway, it's like not a techniques for checking the uh, value for null, it's technique more to avoid the ongoing null checking in case if we are totally sure that the value with which we are using null for given operator is actually null. So it can uh, cost us in our source code with uh, using not so many null checks, something like that. Any questions here or notes? No, okay. And the last well-known like technique, let's say it's actually null reference exception. And it's actually not uh, like a technique, but this is the thing that we are used to in our programming or implementation of our feature. And null reference exceptions, of course, when you attempt to access actually a member of an object or a variable that is null. And actually this K 
can be handled by try catch, as you can see on my example in the screen. What about pros and cons? So the pros is it's anyway provides a mechanism to handle null reference exceptions, but it can lead to a lot of uh, some performance issues and actually some issues in runtime. Uh, what about benchmark and benchmarking? So like, unfortunately, it's almost impossible to benchmark null reference exceptions because uh, using the benchmark.net library, because uh, null reference exceptions are not the feature that can be explicitly called or timed. But null reference exceptions can tr be thrown at runtime when the program tries to dereference a null reference. So actually there is no way to measure their performance impact directly through the benchmark test. But however, generally it's considered the best practice to avoid null reference exceptions in your source code by using defensive programming techniques that we will discuss uh, a bit later. Uh, but anyway, in some cases of maybe debugging code or some other specific cases, you can use null reference exception as a technique for handling uh, null values and uh, uh, maybe to deal with them in more appropriate way when actually uh, we are catching the null reference exception in try cage statement. Any questions here? No questions, okay. And let's move on to some common null handling patterns in C Sharp. So in C Sharp, actually there are several patterns for null handling that can help to improve code's reliability and maintainability. And by using these patterns, developers can reduce the risk of null reference exceptions and other common errors. Uh, and actually let's try a dig into them. But anyway, uh, I would mention here that all of these patterns actually, I assume uh, you know, but uh, maybe you don't know that actually these patterns are patterns and they are called as patterns, but we will see. And the first pattern is actually the null change, the null checking pattern. And this is actually a programming technique used to hand null values. And it actually involves explicitly checking for null values and taking appropriate actions, such as throwing an exception or returning a default value, or maybe perform some other actions. So the basic steps for the null checking pattern are check if the value is null, if it is null handle it appropriately. So throw an exception or return a default value or some other uh, steps uh, that you can use from the techniques that we already described. And if the value is not null, perform the actually desired operation. So let's see a small example here. Uh, it's null checking pattern here. So we have an example of my class with some methods that perform some operation. And currently uh, all of us well-known operation is checking for null. And in my case, I am want to throw a new, new argument exception. Uh, and in case if the value is not null, I am going to like to do some stuff, for example, write to console the actually the same value. So uh, here, as we can see, nothing special. We are used to do it, uh, I hope, in almost all of our implementations to reduce the number of null reference exceptions. And what we can say about the best practices. So uh, actually, we should always consider use null checking pattern to ensure that null reference is not being passed to a method. Also use null 
conditional operator to avoid null reference exception as part of the null checking in this uh, pattern and use the null coalition operator to provide a default value in case of null values. So maybe you have any questions here? I assume no, but anyway. Okay, let's move on. And the next pattern is null object pattern. So this is a design pattern that addresses the issue of null values in object-oriented programming. And the pattern suggests define a special null object that conforms to the same interface as the actual object, but does nothing or returns uh, default values instead of nulls. This allows the client code to treat the null object as a valid object without having to check for nulls values. So in this case, we are not checking for nulls. We are just returning the like special null object. And uh, in this manner, we can avoid some uh, null checks. So um, let's go to an example of null object pattern. And let's see, um, null object pattern. So for example, I have uh, an interface for my logger and I have only one method. It will lock some information, some messages that are come from my uh, source code. I have the null logger class that actually implements the iLogger interface. And I have the log method that actually do nothing here because it's nullable logger. And I have my class when uh, where I using uh, some loggers. So in this class, in the constructor, I'm using the dependency injection just to get the current logger. And in case if the logger is null, I'm not checking it for null anymore. I'm just creating a new null logger object. And uh, I can use the do something method that will allow me to log uh, my information that if the logger was not null and just do nothing uh, in case if null logger was created here. If we're talking about best practices, so we can definitely use the null object pattern to avoid null checks and simplify the code. Uh, we should define the null objects for each class interface that needs a null object representation. It would be very helpful for us. And ensure that null objects have the same behavior as non-null objects. Any questions on the object pattern? No questions. Okay, let's move on. And the next pattern is option types pattern. The option types pattern is in C sharp is a way of handling on null values by encapsulating the value in an object that represents the possibility of the value being null. The basic is, uh, idea here is to avoid using null as a way to indicate the absence of a value and instead use a specialized object to represent the, this possibility. Uh, in C sharp, the most common implementation of the option types pattern is through the use of the nullable T struct, which provides a way to represent a value that can be either of type T or null. Another common implementation using actually a custom option T, uh, T class, which provides similar functionality, but with more control over the behavior. So let's move to the example of option types uh, pattern and to see actually what is this. So I have a per person class that actually have uh, two public uh, properties of type of option string, name and age. And I have the option class that um, option type class that actually um, uh, represents for me 
these uh, two public static methods of returning the value for method sum and method none. So in some method, I will take the not nullable value and in uh, like in method none, I will take a nullable value to see actually how it works. And I have my program class. And here, uh, before returning some uh, person uh, properties, I'm creating a person and using option here for its initialization. So here I'm checking for using the sum method of option struct. Uh, I am using the name John, and for H, I am using the none method with actually null value. And if we want uh, to see the results, so here we will see the name of the person because it would be initialized. And for the H, because the value is null, we will see the actually no h specified as the result speaking about the best practices for option types pattern we can define the following so use option types to handle nullable values in a more functional way use optional types to represent nullable values and uh, actually use methods and extension methods to provide a more functional interface to the option types. Any questions here? No questions. Okay, let's move on. And the next pattern is draw helper pattern. The draw helper pattern is actually a design pattern used in C-sharp programming to improve exception handling performance. In C-sharp, actually drawing an exception is a relativity expensive operation and it can cause a significant performance impact when executed frequently. And the draw helper pattern actually addresses this problem by reusing a single exception instance rather than creating a new one each time an exception is drawn. The pattern involves creating a static helper class that contains methods to draw exceptions. The helper class holds a static instance of the exception object, which is initialized once and reused each time the exception is drawn. So let's move on to our example and to see it. We draw exception draw helper pattern. So here I have my exception class that actually implements the exception. And here I have several uh, constructors for my exception. It will help me to generate uh, maybe some specific exception that I need uh, to deal with in my current implementations. So here I have different of them. And actually I have throw helper class that actually has the public static methods throw with different parameters. And in these parameters, I'm actually throwing the dependent exception and it depends on the parameters that I'm sending to my methods. And as the results, we can see in the program files. So we are using the same draw helper instance, it's static, but depending on the exception we want to show, we can use only one instance of the draw helper class and just deal with its throw method with different parameters here. So it will help us to reduce the memory allocations and time allocations, as well as uh, to deal more efficiently with uh, different types of exceptions that we need to handle in our source code or different types of messages we need to show depending on the exception. So talking about the best practices for draw helper classes, we should use a throw helper pattern to provide meaningful error messages. We should define a separate class 
the throws exception with meaningful error messages and use a separate class to throw exception to avoid cluttering the main code. Any questions on the throw helper pattern? No questions. Okay, let's move on. And the next pattern is actually cont code contracts. And code contracts is a technique in C sharp that allows developers to specify preconditions as well as post conditions and object invariants for methods and classes. It provides a way to validate input arguments and ensure that the state of an object is consistent through its lifetime. Uh, well, it uh, when it comes to null handling values handling, code contracts can be used to specify that a parameter or return value, uh, value should not be null. So actually to implement the code contracts, we should define the contracts for your methods uh, or classes using the contract requires and contract ensures method and contract invariant as well as attributes and run our code with contract checking enabled, uh, either in debug mode or by setting the system diagnostic uh, contract failed event handler. So let's see how it looks like in the example on the code contracts pattern. So I have a customer class that has some properties, ID, name, and address, and uh, some of the constructors where we are initializing that properties. And we have some example of my class with several methods, say hello and find custom. And here we are already using contracts as uh, using the system diagnostics library. And here before I'm dealing with uh, the properties of uh, my um, customer class, I just using contracts and requires method. And here I'm stating that the name should not be null. And if it should, if it null, I'm going through the code and just writing in my example, hello and name of the um, customer. Also, when we are using the contract ensures uh, method here, we are ensure that actually customer is not null itself and is uh, that string that came here is not null or empty in my uh, example. And if it's okay, then we will result in creating of new customer class with the uh, assigned name to it that is actually not null. If you are talking about the best practices for code contracts, uh, they are the following. So we can use the con contracts to specify preconditions and post conditions for a method. We should definitely use code contracts require method to specify a preconditions, and we should use the method contract ensures to specify some post conditions. Any questions here? No questions. Okay. And the next pattern is actually all well known for us. It's uh, actually the thing that we are used to use in our day to day programming is defensing, defensive programming pattern. And this pattern focuses on anticipating and handling potential issues and errors, including null reference exceptions. And the goal of actually defensive programming is to make the code more robust, reliable, and resistant to unexpected errors. Uh, the main steps for implementing this pattern is validate input, check all input parameters, handle null or invalid input parameters, and use some defensive techniques using the null coalescing operators and some null handling techniques uh, and patterns that we already discussed in this presentation to parameter validation before we accessing them and using actually in our source code. So if you are talking about the 
uh, examples of defensive programming. It's actually nothing new to us. Actually, in my example, I have one class that doing something and the part of defense in programming, I am using the input check for null. And in my case, I'm throwing the new argument null exception as the way to, for me to debug, for example, this input parameter. And if we are talking about the best practices, so we should use defensive programming to handle unexpected situations, use try cage blocks to handle exceptions and use assertions to ensure that assumptions about the code are valid. Any questions here? Yeah, we have one question in the chat. Can you look at it? Yes. Uh, in code book. Um, so not to perform all check now. Is someone check as well? As... Yeah, so actually I assume it's not a question, but it's a good note here. Thank you, Andre. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? No questions, okay. So now let's go to key points for actually no handling in C Sharp. So for the key points actually, and some outcomes to this presentation, I would mention the following. So actually null variables in C Sharp can lead to null reference exceptions, which can cause runtime errors and crashes. We should always check for nulls before using a reference type object or assessing its members to avoid null reference exceptions. We should use null coalition operator or null forgiving operator to provide default values or suppress the null warnings. But be careful here. In case of null forgiving operator, we should be 100% sure that the value is not null. Also, we should use defensive programming techniques uh, to avoid some null uh, reference exceptions and unexpected situations. Also, we should consider using null handling patterns to provide safe and expressive ways of handling null values. As well as when using these techniques and patterns, we should consider their performance impact. So, uh, it actually depends on the, uh, your own tasks related to all your own situations in your source code. But anyway, be aware of potential performance impact when you're working with uh, a big amount of data, such as SQL queries on some big massive strings. And also as an option, we should use static code analysis tools such as ReSharper or SonarCube that will help us to avoid the unexpected behavior in our source code, or at least will notify us about the possibility of um, the null reference exceptions in our source code. So actually this is it that I wanted to share with you today. Maybe you have any questions, concerns, or some notes. Sorry for interruption. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, as I saw previously, uh, option pattern is, in my opinion, is a great solution for such uh, scenarios. But uh, I wanted to ask uh, if it's often, uh, if, it, if it's used uh, often on the projects. Mm, I would say that it depends. It depends on the concrete tasks and concrete implementation and uh, concrete architecture on the project. So from my perspective to use just but uh, pattern because it's pattern it's not a good idea because uh, it could be an anti-pattern in the results but anyway if you have some uh, difficult uh, architecture or maybe some specifics uh, from maybe your tech lead that you should definitely use this pattern yes 
But anyway, I assume that you can use the more simplest techniques as was described in this uh, presentation to handle nulls. But uh, actually, uh, on my experience, I did not saw the option uh, pattern for especially null handlings often in some big projects. I saw a lot of defensive programming uh, of null object patterns, yes, but uh, about option patterns for null handling, no. But anyway, it's a good option. And actually you should, you should use it when you have such like tasks or requirements on your project. Uh, well, why I ask? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I saw uh, such uh, implementation in uh, Rust programming language. Mm -hmm. It heavily uh, relies on this uh, options uh, structure. So yeah. uh, I just uh, uh, I was just wondering if uh, this pattern is used in .NET. Uh, thank you for why. You're welcome. Any other questions, notes, concerns? Yeah, we have some notes uh, in chat. Yes. Yeah, never seen option pattern in projects. Yeah, I can imagine option pattern in console application. So actually, yeah, Martin and Zoltan, you are right. Mm 